Hey guys. So today I decided that I want to talk about smoke. Do you want me to roll a blunt? What? No. No, I mean not 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 that kind of smoke. Okay. So as I said, I want to talk about smoke. Alexa, seriously, stop it. Okay, putting jokes aside, what I really want to talk about today is those fumes that are emitted during soldering and about a simple way to counter them. So as the winter comes here in Europe, at least, and uh, not many of us makers are uh, lucky enough to have a lab or maker space equipped with fancy air cleaning uh, equipment, uh, we decide to use uh, fume extractors. Fume extractor is a device like this. This is my DIY fume extractor. So I will show it later as the main content of this video, obviously. So how does a fume extractor works? Basically, it has a fan that is powerful enough to um, just uh, suck in the smoke generated during solder soldering or other stuff and um, just pushes it through a material that is dense enough to bind the harmful uh, content of the smoke, uh, the, the fumes and um, yeah, basically that's it, it's just a filter, an active filter uh, built around a fan so it's not that hard to make and yeah let me show you how I made mine so here are all the materials you will need they are easy to obtain they are cheap and most probably you have most of them anyway the most important thing is having a fan so a fan has two parameters you have to watch out for. The first one is airflow, the second one is air pressure. Airflow means how much air the fan moves around, typically during a minute. And air pressure means how, it, how easy it is for the fan to push the air through the filtering material. Uh, basically you want to have both of these parameters as high as possible, but um, you can just use any fan, to be honest. It is fully optional, but you might want to use a mechanism to control the fan speed, just in case. Luckily for me, I had a fan controller uh, laying around. A fan controller is basically a potentiometer with a fancy knob on it. In case of mine, this was a 100 ohm potentiometer. By adjusting the potentiometer, you are basically uh, lowering or raising the resistance within the circuit, effectively uh, tuning down or spinning up the motor of the fan. While I was lucky enough to have the controller at hand, I wasn't too happy about the lot of extra wires it involved because of the connectors and stuff, so I started cutting up things. Typically for a fan there are three or even four wires, but uh, you will only need two, the V core and the ground. Usually these are marked by red and black respectively. Thanks to today's aesthetic trends you might end up with a fan which has four black wires or something like that. Uh, luckily for you the wiring is standard, so I will just put a link in the description where you can find which wire is which. As I said, I cut the wires to my liking. On the fan I had a third wire, a yellow one, which I didn't really need at the moment, but I decided to leave a little bit of it, so I can solder to that uh, later on, if I ever decide to f use the fan for other purposes. After finishing cutting and cleaning the wires, you might want to check out if everything works correctly. By the way, this is the circuit we are going for. As you can see, it's pretty easy. All you have to care about is connecting the potentiometer 
and the fan in the right order. So potentiometer first, then the fan and not in the reverse order. Regarding the power supply, you can basically use anything that can provide you with 12 volts DC and at least 250 milliamps. Once you have finished trying out the circuit and everything seems to be working, it's time to solder stuff together. To isolate the solder joints, I used some heat shrink tubes, but electrical tapes will do it just fine. At this point we are done with the wiring. Although it is totally optional, it's nice to have a front cover to prevent wires and other smaller parts getting to the fan. For this purpose pretty much every cover will do. The only thing you have to keep in mind that it should not restrict the airflow too much. For the filter, you have to choose a material that is dense enough to bind microscopic particles of the smoke, but uh, still leaves air to flow through. To be honest, for this part I will have to experiment. For the first attempt, this dense foam thing will do. Hey, I almost forgot to tell, when assembling this stuff, keep an eye out for the airflow direction of the cooler. After assembly, carefully check that the filter material does not touch the fan. If it does, carefully stretch it on the sides so it will move away from the fan. Now it's time to test. For this purpose, I used an instant stick. After turning on the fume extractor, you can see that it instantly starts pulling the smoke towards itself. However, the smoke does not appear on the other side. So the particles are bound within the foam. After a successful test we could say we are ready, but to be honest I found this construction a bit too easy to tip over, so I decided to give it some stability. As you will see, having some left or aluminium around can come handy. To be honest, for this part I suggest you to use a drill press, 
and don't do what I did. Otherwise, you will just be drilling and drilling and drilling. The final part is basically locking those loose wires into place with our trusty old glue gun. And so here it is the final product. I'm not saying it's perfect, nor that it doesn't need any more polishing, but uh, for now it will do. At least for me. Hope you like it too. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.